hello everyone welcome back thank you for joining me it's been a minute since I've actually filmed something um I had to go into the field to do field work for my master's thesis so I kind of just had to like up and leave and I didn't have time to like pre-film anything or film videos in advance or like edit upload anything like that so here we are together once again um have you missed me probably not <laughs> the 20 people <laughs> that watch my videos i'm sure have been very sad but today i thought that we would do something not different i mean different for me anyway basically <laughs> Basically, I wanted to just chat with you guys about new releases that I want and then I'm going to try to talk myself out of. We'll see how successful I am. But there's, I feel like recently within the past like couple months, there have been so many, specifically eyeshadow, but things in general, releases that I just want so bad. I think they're so nice and I just want them but I'm trying to like whoa rein it in with the buying of items and <laughs> I don't I, okay I could probably talk myself out of any eyeshadow purchase because I there's no world in which I need more eyeshadow but these are the things that have been tempting me and I thought let's talk ourselves out of them together okay let's do it so I'm gonna scooch over and put pictures of the things on the screen beside me. If I take them from someone's Instagram page, which would likely either be Indie Makeup Spotlight or Makeup World News or a like brand, specific brand Instagram page, regardless, I'll like leave their Instagram handle slash the source of the image when I put the little picture up here. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is something that is really exposing me for the basic ass hoe that I am and it's something that I really didn't expect that I would want but the more I saw pictures of it and the more I saw people talking about it the more that I've just developed a desire for it and <laughs> it's the Too Faced Pumpkin Spice palette every <laughs> every part of that like sentence is makes me feel slightly ashamed but not really because I kind of want it is this a basic ass warm neutral palette yes yes it is do I still want it yes yes I do but there's like a mustard shade there's a purple shade there's some shimmery greens like I I'm kind of into it I kind of really want it it's not hard to tell myself that I don't need this because there's nothing in this palette that would like necessarily be a unique addition to my collection because it's like a warm neutral palette <laughs> but I just there's something about it that I just desire so badly and I haven't bought I haven't bought a Too Faced eyeshadow palette well I only own the chocolate bar palette from Too Faced, I'm pretty sure. So it's the only one that I own, and I looked at the gingerbread like palettes in the past years, but I, those were really truly just like warm neutral palettes. I was like, I there's nothing I need less in my collection, but there's something about this that is, I just love it. I just love it. I don't know that I would pay full price for this, but if something happens and there's a sale. <sighs> I'm not gonna say that I'm not gonna buy it, okay? But let me stay here for the world to see that I do not need it. Okay, and this next thing I actually, oh, I actually might get it. It launches today and it's the uh, new Futurism palettes from Kaleidos. Oh, I just think they're so beautiful. They are two new six pan palettes from Kaleidos and i think they're so beautiful they are more like neutral neutrally well one is like a lavender palette and one is like basically a neutral palette and the thing about these is that i have loved everything that i've tried from kaleidos and i really 
love everything about them basically like their packaging their qualities they're one of my favorite eyeshadow formulas ever and i missed out on getting their like neon palette that they released i mean it's probably like a year ago i never bought it and i kind of feel sad that i didn't so i feel like kaleidos might be one of those brands where i just buy all of their shit or that I like buy their new releases as they come out. I really don't do that with a lot of brands, if any. If you've watched any of my videos, it's me constantly buying old palettes that are limited edition that are like on the verge of leaving forever. So it's just like a really great thing to do when you feel stupid saying have a YouTube channel, but, but buying <laughs> old palettes is not necessarily what people want to watch. Anyway, that, this is just basically me saying I think I might actually buy these and they launch today so I guess I have a short amount of time to make my mind up and I also might buy the turquoise one if I'm on their website and making an order but stay tuned to see how that goes. So I did a shitty job of talking myself out of this but oh well. <laughs> the next palette is one that launched about a month ago. I think it yeah, released August 7th, and it's the Ace Butane Nostalgia Palette. Now, again, truly, there's nothing about this that I need. Again, it's basically like a warm, pinky purple, orangey palette with a pop of teal. Um, there's nothing about that that I need, but there's something about Ace Butane color stories that are just so so impeccably well done like truly absolutely chef's kiss whoever is doing ace beauty's color stories deserves some type of award or promotion or raise or all three of those things because they're so spot on every time i basically want every single one of their palette that they have and i just think this is no exception it's so beautiful um, I've never tried Ace Beauté's formula. I've heard incredibly mixed reviews. Some people like literally detest their formula and some people are like this is my favorite eyeshadow formula. So it's really up in the air. <laughs> um, it's a very apparently love or hate thing and I, I really do want to try Ace Beauté. They're kind of like a brand that's very high on my list of brands that I want to try. Um, I just, I'm so intrigued by them. I think, I don't know if this would be the first palette that I would pick up from them though. And because it is like a warm neutral pinky palette with a pop of like teal slash blue slash green, I probably won't end up picking this up. It's like relatively easy, easy to talk myself out of it. But as soon as I saw them posted, I was like, ooh, I want that. The next, this next one is also one that has received a lot of hype or a lot of anticipation in the launch and it's also one that I blatantly do not need at all but it's the new Stacy Marie MUA slash Be Perfect Carnival palette this is the third one and when I first saw this I was like mm, uh really <laughs> because our first two are basically just like big rainbow palettes um and so Rainbow palettes aren't like super my thing. I prefer more of kind of like a curated color story, a monochromatic palette, not necessarily a rainbow. Like I'm not, rainbow palettes are not the first palette type of palettes that I go towards. There's something about this specific rainbow palette though that I just want so desperately with every fiber of my being. And I think it's because, well, number one, I love those like mustardy, grungy, green and yellow shades in the top like corner um i think they're so beautiful but i also love that there obviously is a rainbow but with every color family there's a range of depths so you have light purples deep purples lighter greens deep greens you know like a range of tones and depths it's not just like one red orange yellow blue green whatever but when a rainbow palette has that then I'm like, okay, let's talk. I'm, I'm interested in you. I want you. Like, we can, we can fuck with each other. And I just, there's something about this that I think is so pretty. Obviously, I haven't bought it. I didn't buy it when it first released. 
it's likely not something that I'm it's not something that I'm in a rush to buy or that I feel like I need to buy immediately but it's something that I think is gonna keep my attention for a while okay and this next one I I honestly did almost buy it on the day it launched and then I kind of reined myself in <laughs> get it it's the colored rain juicy boost palette um, I love colored rain its formula so much I think it's so beautiful creeping up to be one of my like top favorite eyeshadow formulas ever and I love this I'm a sucker for pinks and oranges there's a lot of pinks and oranges in this palette again it's not something that I need um it's actually one of the last things that I need but I just really I think it's really really nice the only thing that really holds me back from buying this is that I feel like there could be some more deeper shades there is one like really deep green I'm pretty sure it's a green and then it looks like obviously I don't have it I haven't even really looked at that many swatches of it because I've been just like trying to avoid looking at it so I don't feel tempted to buy it um, but it does look like with the pinks and orangey browns that there are a lot of mid-tone chains I feel like they could have gone a little bit deeper with those and because of that I feel like less inclined to buy it because it is an 18 shade palette and I feel like it would be a shame to have to reach into another palette with an 18 shade palette just to get a deepening shade. I'm not opposed to using other palettes in conjunction with each other. I basically do it all the time. It's just like when it could have had like just a couple more deeper shades. That's the main thing that I've been using to talk myself out of it. Um, that being said, I'm not opposed to buying it. It might happen, okay? Don't hold it against me. If it happens, don't hold it against me. This next one, again, I don't need. I think we can all safely agree that I don't need any single one of the things that I'm talking about, but this one I really, with the, my first thought when I saw pictures of this was you don't need it, and then my second thought was that I want it, and it's the, also launched a while ago, again, at the beginning of August and it's the Mel Thompson and Sydney Grace Tiny Marvels palette. This, some people really loved it, some people really were like, I really could take or leave the color story. I like it. I think it's a really beautiful neutral palette for with like some pops of pastels. I think it's a unique variation on a neutral palette that I could semi justify buying. But also because it's like neutrally, I know that I don't need it. I just think they are really beautiful shades. I think she did a really good job of curating the color story. There is one really deep shade. There are a lot of like light slash mid-tone shades. I mean, Mel Thompson is lighter skin tone. She's a white YouTuber. So, I mean, it kind of makes sense if she's choosing shades. If she's choosing shades for a palette likely with mainly her skin tone in mind. Um, I haven't watched really any like reviews on it or anything to know what people with deeper skin tones think of it and how you know it translates on a deeper skin tone but I do think it's really beautiful and I've wanted to try Sydney Grace's formula for so long. I almost bought something from their uh, Christmas in July sale back in July uh, but their shipping is $25 US to Canada and I just can't justify it. <laughs> I just can't justify it. Um, and then you have to spend so much money to get free shipping that I'm like, it's a fucking lot of money for one order. Anyway, basically, if they ever have free shipping, maybe for Black Friday or something, I would be interested in trying them out because I. I hear everyone talk about just how amazing Sydney Grace is and how amazing their shadow formula is and I would be very intrigued and this palette I was like ooh that looks so beautiful but because it's $25 shipping and it's like a neutrally toned palette it's has been easy to talk myself out of it. The only time I would consider picking that up like I said is if they have a like free shipping time or something then I would consider it but I doubt that's gonna happen in the near future. This next palette is one that I 
honestly, when I saw it launch, I completely wrote it off. I was like, next skip. Like, I really didn't even spend that much time thinking about it. And then I became more and more intrigued when I saw everyone start to make videos about it and everyone else was kind of like, ooh, I want this palette. And I was like, is there something that I'm missing here? Like, am I stupid? Like, is there something that I don't know? And then I've watched, the more reviews I've watched, the more like people I hear talk about it, the more intrigued I am. And it's the Urban Decay Stoned Palette. I really, it was just like, this is just a palette with shimmery shades. I don't need a palette with mostly shimmery shades and some mid-tone browns. I really don't need that. But everyone seems to love it. And I think it just has really pretty, like, textured metallic shades. Who doesn't love that, right? I don't know. I think it does look pretty. I think that I would probably enjoy it if I had it. It's not something that I'm going to brush out and buy. Also, the deeper shade is like a weird satin shade. And I just feel like I don't understand who who is on Urban Decay's like production team or whatever that lets all these palettes get released with really deep metallic shades. Here's the thing. I don't hate really deep metallic shades. I, I think, you know, everyone has a different makeup preference. I don't think they're bad to have in palettes, but I just don't think Urban Decay listens to people when people say we need deeper mattes and your palette stop stop it with all the deep satin metallic shades and just make it a matte. Like I think this palette would have been more, so much more versatile and would have applied better to a wider variety of people's makeup preferences if they had just made that shade a matte. It honestly boggles the mind, it really boggles the mind and I think whoever is on the development team, like the tail end of the development team at Urban Decay needs to get fired and they need to hire someone else because their decisions don't make sense to me. But anyway, I could see my, if it goes on sale or something, um, I could see myself buying it. I could use my Pharma Pre points. <laughs> it's something that I could see myself picking up on a discount or with points or something like that. Uh, but I'm, I feel okay just waiting letting other people enjoy it eyeing it from afar and waiting but it it did catch my attention oh and this next one when it gets back in stock I am buying it so so much for the talking myself out of point of this video but I'm getting this because it looks fucking amazing and it's the crayon case blush binder I lost track of my mind I wasn't paying attention when it released like I wasn't checking for it, I didn't write it down. Um, and then it obviously went out of stock because it's so beautiful. But there are so many, look at, look at all these beautiful blush shades. There's so many beautiful bright blush shades. Oh, it looks like everything I've ever wanted. I feel so excited about this product and I cannot wait for it to get back in stock because I am going to be on that shit this time and this time I'm gonna get it it looks so beautiful um and I'm just oh I can't wait along the same lines another blush palette that I likely will wait slash mate I probably won't get it but it really caught my attention is the Menagerie Cosmetics Arthurine blush palette um, I've never tried anything from Menagerie similar to the Sydney Gray situation. Their shipping cost is $20 US to Canada, which just seems so expensive. So I might on Black Friday just ship it to one of my friends. And then if we ever see each other again, one day, <laughs> one day when the borders open up, um, I I'll, maybe I'll ship it to one of my friends in the States and then... I'll mosey on over or they can mosey on over here and then we can exchange my goods <laughs> but um yeah I've never bought anything for Nagerie I'm very intrigued by them I have heard nothing but pretty much nothing but amazing things I love their color stories I love their packaging I love everything about them and I love good blush palette and this looks so beautiful I feel like maybe they could have gone a little bit deeper with some shades but I'm not the best judge of that and I also don't have it with me so 
you know, photographs can be different sometimes, but it definitely did catch my attention because I love me some blush. And then the next one is one, again, that I could probably wait on buying slash not buy, but it did intrigue me, is the new Sigma Untamed palette. It looks really grungy and dusky and like everything that I like in my shadows. It looks really, really pretty, um, but it's not so revolutionary that I feel like I want to pay the money to buy it. And I feel like with a lot of Sigma palettes, I just, I looked at them initially when they launched and I'm like, no, I don't need it. And then I hear people buying them and raving about how much they love them. And so now I'm like, damn, I want all the Sigma palettes. And I feel like that this is kind of one of those things. Sigma seems to have really like stepped their quality up and everyone loves their palettes. They say it's so beautiful. And this looks like a really pretty color story. I maybe would have wished to have less like really light beigey shades because that's something that I'm like, I don't need to have like five transition shades from my skin tone. What about all the people who aren't a light, not even medium, just like straight up light skin tone. I think you'd probably have to write off a lot of the shades. So that's one thing too that I'm like, why? Like if you're gonna make this, like it seems like they're really going for like a grungier, deeper vibe. Why would you include so many like light shades? Sorry, once again, my camera cut off, so if I'm diff if I look different or differently positioned, that is why. But the last thing that I wanted to talk about is something that I'm intrigued by, but definitely not like running out to buy. It's just something that caught my attention and has, you know, I'm keeping it in the back of my mind. And it is the brand Miali Beauty that just launched, which I believe is a new brand from the owner of Blush Tribe. Blush Tribe was an indie brand that closed down during COVID and then I believe the owner started this new brand called Miali Beauty and the palettes that they have released look really really pretty specifically the Yasmin or Yasmin I'm not totally sure how to pronounce that palette um I mean it is just like a warm pinky orange burgundy palette but they just get me, man. Like, I just think they're so nice. Definitely don't need it. Uh, but I am interested to hear what people have to say. I know a lot of people really, really loved Blush Tribe. Um, and I was pretty sad when they closed because I was like, well, now I'm never going to be able to, like, be able to try them. But if the owner started a new brand, I'm not totally sure what's going on with that, what the reasoning is. But I'm intrigued. I would love to know your guys' thoughts on this. All right, everyone, that concludes this video. It was really fun actually to just like talk about this. It's not quite like a new makeup releases because some of these were old. It's basically just like blush slash eyeshadow palettes, but I thought it was still fun. I would love to know your guys' thoughts on the things that I mentioned. Are you guys gonna buy them? Are you also trying to talk yourself out of them? I feel like I didn't really do a great job of talking myself out of most things, but I feel like for most of these, I'm going to wait. I'm not going to rush out and buy them. I know the reasons why I shouldn't buy them, but that's truly never stopped me before. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if there's anything that you have a burning desire to see from me, and I will hopefully see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Bye.